dietary practices. But everybody is not meant to be vegan and everybody is not meant to be carnivorous, eat meat. You have to know your body in order to know if it's functional for you to quit meat or some people quit all of the meat byproducts. But you have to be self-aware to know where you fit in. The fatigue factor is a, 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 a heavy side effect of the UV rays. It's a lot of UV uh, rays coming in affecting the earth and also the degree that the earth is changing. And when these two things are happening like they are simultaneously, it also causes the individual's genetic makeup to begin to change. And the only way you repair yourself is in your stasis, which we call sleep state. The mud floods is exactly that. Um, what happened is, is they would blow up. Um, size of the mountain after they dam up um, a dam. When you had an avalanche, you let the water from the dam burst free. And when the water and the avalanche mix, it, it causes a massive mudslide. And they've been doing that. They did that to a lot of our cities. That's why a lot of the cities not on the map no more because they covered them in mud or they just flat out dammed them up and buried them in the lake, right? And this is all documented, so it can be looked up. It's not hard to find. They just call them, they just say the mud floods just happened. If you believe that, then I got some swamp land in Florida I can sell you for a good price. So, yeah. This science, the African, what they call root science, is the same science that we had over here with different names for the Orishas. The Orishas' names over here was what we call Mexoamerican names, right? But it's the same science. It's the earth defensive magical science for balancing out the earth so when you study in the seven african powers them same powers is found in mesoamerica in hieroglyphs and throughout mexico going down into south america um some of the other gods in egypt can also be found in mesoamerica so you're not doing nothing wrong that's one of the reasons Garvey told us to form a confraternity with Africa, because we had to relearn those ancient um, um, rituals to help us break the Kanja war we was in, since they erased our history and killed anybody that passed our languages down. We've lost a lot of our indigenous languages and cultural practices, so we have to go to kindred tribes from around the world to piece our science of recovery back together. So um, you should study all occult sciences if you are a priest. You shouldn't take sides in the information and remember that when you reading these people, you really just reading the energy signatures that you can control to manifest a better tomorrow out of the struggles of today.
this is culturally um different right right because we born in orisha bloodlines already the, so these bloodlines that we be born into these are are the ones we call orishas is great ancestors of ours and we all over the world but these these are the ancestors whose power, when we activate them in the self, um, wakes up our higher self to who we are. And we can work with the energies of any one of the Orisha um, if we understand who we are. If we don't, the Orisha that you're working with will send you to somebody from the Orisha bloodline you're from. So let's say a girl, because she feel like she Oshun, start working with Oshun energy, but she's really a daughter of Yimiya. Oshun will train her in all of the Oshun rights until she become aware that she in the wrong school, and then she'll send her back home to go learn her rightful practices and vice versa, right? So the Arisha not... Um, like stubborn people it's energies you work with um to, to help you realize yourself and the the natural uh spiritual energy is going to put you in your rightful category even if you have to start off wrong path in order to get to the right path when you start working with any one of the ancestral energies called Arisha. They're going to always teach you first enough to make you aware of where you rightfully belong. Then they're going to send you there. They're going to align the energy where you find yourself in your rightful position in order to be most effective working with the ancestral energies. Every so-called human is a reptilian mammalian hybrid. If you human being, that's what you is. You got a reptilian brain, old mammal brain, new mammal brain. The old mammal brain is your primate brain. The reptilian brain is your reptile brain. Then your new mammalian brain is your sapien sapien brain, or what they call the brain that facilitates the guide mind or the animal. Naki brain, however you want to call it. But you can work, work with reptilian energy. Look, chaos magic say if it works, use it. Um, everybody not a chaos magician though. But in chaos magic, if it works, use it. When you're working with reptilian energy, you have to be aware that the snake is beginner um foolish energy and that's why a snake will bite its owner whereas when you work with the um lizard energy you working with a higher reptilian energy when you work with the dragon energy now you're working with reptile master energy the dragon mean master so once you get to that dragon energy when you're gonna first go through what's called a self-initiation where you looking in the mirror and you dragon dancing with yourself. The goal is not to bite your tail. When you bite your tail, that means you failed your lesson. You have to go back and learn it all over again. Flip you into a loop. That's why you have to see um, there's no religion higher than truth. And the serpent is biting his tail. As long as the tail not bit, that means he passed the lesson. If he bite his tail... That means that he wasn't ready for the dance, right? So once you get good and you can dance with yourself without biting your tail, now you're ready to dance with a partner. When you dance with a partner, um, then now y'all dragon dancing, y'all normally have to have what's called a referee, a priest that's the referee to determine if you who bit their tail. It's um it's a test for masters, and it's called dragon dancing. 
but there's no actual dragon involved. It's psychic energy being unleashed at its highest potential under the control of the person who's releasing the energy. And the dragon dance with a partner is two people using their psychic energy to its highest level to communicate without biting their tail, without biting their partner tail. Don't step on your dance partner's feet is the um, instruction. So once these two energies dragon dancing, one of them has to lead and one of them has to follow, but neither one of them can miss a beat, right? And that's a, a whole higher consciousness exercise of spiritual development. And that's why they had dragon schools in the Far East, but that's what they was for, right? What we be seeing right now is martial arts is ballet to them. The real martial arts Arts is not privy to be on display in the public because you can really do some real damage. They now starting to come out because the elders been calling the masters to come out. So sooner or later they're going to come out. But when they come out, they come in for every fight championship on the planet whenever they come out. And they not bullshitting. And they fighting styles is impeccable. Yeah. The program is not Sophia. Sophia is the combat mechanism of wisdom from the mother that we use to fight against the holographic matrix. The holographic matrix was turned on with what we call the Big Bang. It's held in place by the Dark Knight satellite in the moon. And um, it's to, to keep us is to keep us at low vibration so we will behave more human than God. And it's allowing us to assimilate. Uh, it's like an accelerated learning program in the spirit realm. Though it seems like it's a long, drawn-out lesson while you're on Earth, in the spirit realm, it's just a quick let me download this information, boom, I'm done. It's like instant. Because time is not a constraint in the spirit as it is in the hologram. The hologram used the mechanics of time in order to give you a separation in events due to the delay in the manifestation. And as long as you think that you're more human, then you actually are. You can't access those higher gifts that can accelerate and slow down on time. No, that that's malleable. In the powers of the mind, you can speed up and slow down time. And all it is is because of this mind matrix we in. Once we learn how to master this, see, you got to understand that there's a delay in our ability to manifest. And because of the delay, most of us don't know that the suffering and the reality is what we manifest by being frustrated at the time interval between the manifestation. Because we're not looking at it's a process to get where we want to be. If we don't implement a process to get to the destination, the time gets heavy and drawn out and miserable. As soon as we realize that there's a delay in our manifestation and the only way to bring it totally into fruition is to go through all other steps of the process of manifestation. That means first visualize it. Then all, all of the things to get you from where you at to the manifestation you have to do your due diligence and then the universe can finish connecting the dots for you, right? And it makes your manifestation appears faster. It's not that it's faster, it's that you have more control of your mental body to apply 
this without allowing the struggles of working through the restrictions that the linear time frames put on your ability to manifest into reality what you're working on. A lot of people get frustrated because of the delay and that make them fail to complete the manifestation. They abandon it before they've done their due diligence to acquire it. So the universe say abort mission, don't manifest that bullshit. He didn't mean it. And the manifestation was put there, the delay was to stop us from acting in the moment of rage and manifesting something we won't we will be guilty or don't mean at the time we just mad so now we have to put the buffer there and the buffer it comes across as the concept of time and this is what prevent us from going to higher um understandings of our ability to manifest and we read bullshit like the secret they threaten to tell you the secret throughout the entire book, but never tell you the secret. You always in the matrix as long as you're in the human body. The matrix is controlled by mitochondrial. Then as a matter of fact, the matrix is in the mitochondrial. Your consciousness comes to you through mitochondrial energy input into the DNA that commands the organism on what to be but you can interrupt the pattern by going the wrong direction, flipping your mirrors backwards. So a lot of y'all are not aware, there is an army base in Texas. There's a whole lot of orphans that's coming through that base and they sending them to um different people throughout the country to take care of the children that they extracting from underground tunnels and human trafficking rings and they have to try to find a lot of these kids parents but unfortunately all of them not going to be able to find their parents so the chiefs is going to end up being foster parents or godparents to a couple hundred children apiece that we're going to have to be responsible for their well-being and we're going to have to have a structured uh, format to receive these children they really pulling them out they really been pulling children from dark places for the last four and a half years almost five years at least the mission started when Trump first got elected under the White Hat um, operation before they started with the QAnons as telling us about what's going on. These children has been the central part of what's making the mothers mad enough to reclaim their shit. And the patriarchs knew that eventually the mothers was going to get fed up and make one of these boys chiefs go out there and do something so that we can protect these children and this is was the benefit was they used the children's exploitation to keep us in a slumber the side effect is is some of the elder women was able to wake up in the slumber and start doing the um, bridging of the gaps in order to break the curses they was using by spilling righteous blood in the form of children. When they talk about the blood of the saints, that's what they talking about. The innocent children is what makes them saints. Not them motherfuckers the Catholic Church tell you they a saint. Ain't none of them motherfuckers saints. 
them babies that they've been murdering them that's the innocence and that's what saint really mean so when they talk about being intoxicated on the blood of the saints they telling you that the baby murder is how they was going to keep us in the stupor once they do the blood ritual to put us under which was the assassination of crispus atticus and writing his blood the constitution in his blood which was really an oral tradition but they used his blood and wrote it down in order to usurp us that shit was crazy but we woke now so i hope that answered your question but big mama is fed up with these motherfuckers they throwing their tantrums on the way out but they gotta go Okay, I'm going to do two more, more questions, y'all, and I'm going to wrap it up. Look, <clears throat> when they brought the few little people they brought from Africa, they didn't bring them to the mainland of America. They took them to the islands in South America they end up mixing with the tribes now over here on the east coast of america for thousands of years the royal families of africa and the royal families of the americas have intermarried you have people from kenya showing up in polynesian islands before the arrival of any of those people that invaded and colonized later we always knew each other we always because we traded wives with royal families to purify the blood periodically you, you can't keep marrying into the same family with no outside blood because that'll break down the bloodline all you got to do is study the habsburgs that's what they tried to do it don't work so on the west coast the califia queens would allow the men to marry women from asia from japan china and they were boats that they but that shit that they tell us in the transatlantic slave trade is not possible those couldn't have been the ships that they transported any kind of slaves because that was a gas chamber in a week and we talking about a long ass trip with no motherfucking bathroom, no running water. You gotta remember, they used to have you swab the deck, the poop deck. That's where everybody used to shit. That's why it was called the poop deck. If you watch the cartoon Popeye, you remember that his father was a Navy man and his name was Poop Deck Pappy. The poop deck the one who was over the poop deck was the pappy over the poop deck, poop deck pappy. That means that he was the one who appointed the person to brush the shit into the ocean and scrub the shit off the poop deck, right? So when we, we look at all that stuff and the slave ship narrative is that they was chained man to man like sardines in the hull of a ship. That's not possible. Nobody could withstand, because you got to remember, if they're not a seafaring people, they're going to get seasick and throw up. They're going to have diarrhea from drinking salt water because there's, no there's not enough fresh water to water that many people, right? right? You got to remember the rickets. You got to remember that most of them used to take kegs of beer to drink on the seas because they didn't have fresh water, right? They didn't know how to purify salt water at the time. So if you drink salt water, it's going to give you diarrhea. It's a laxative. This is not possible, right? It's not possible for the narrative they gave us. But the reason they gave us that slave ship narrative was for us to discover academia as the um, destination, specifically Notre Dame University, is where the slave narrative 
as a military strategy to usurp the people was written, right? And this is the harsh treatment under the George Washington challenge that they speak of, right? And so the, the they didn't mix in on the Trail of Tears. They mixed in Mongols that wasn't chained to the hull of the ship. They could go to the poop deck, and they had a sh shorter trip going from Europe to New York than they did coming from Africa, catching the current around, which took about six to nine months. Whereas the current that takes you from um, from England, uh, from Europe to America, only take like two weeks. Right, so it's a whole different story they're telling us from the reality that we faced with. We, we know they were seafarers. This is, but the way that they tell us that narrative, it doesn't fit with any ma any type of scientific observation. It doesn't fit, but it's the perfect layover for the cathedral at Notre Dame University, when you lay it over, you realize it's a blueprint. What's a bl blueprint? A blueprint is the structure of a way a thing is supposed to be on paper, right? right? And the structure of white supremacy is the protocols of the wise men of Zion. And the organization and the rollout is by using morals and dogma as a blueprint or as a template to operate the blueprint in order to build the community or the structure of a false narrative, right? So they, they was building us up to replace us by us not knowing who we was, by us knowing who we are, and now they don't know what to do. They mad as hell because I know who my people is when I see them, and I don't need nobody from outside of us to tell me who he is, and I don't need man book because I know how to read the culture that I'm from. When I see things that don't fit with our culture, I know that right there is an invader. It's an imposter. That's somebody that look like us that's not us. Right? So the um, comparative analysis tells us that this is not functionally possible to use this slave ship narrative and it be true. Then that brings to remembrance that Winston Churchill said the truth so valuable, it must be carefully guarded by a ring of lies. I didn't say that shit. The people that was doing the dirt said that shit. So if they come if they concealing the truth with a ring of lies, what's the truth that the ring of lies encompass? The truth of the matter is we was here before their Bible came and we're going to be here when their Bible leave. When their Bible came, it brought with them a contract using the priests as motherfucking military advancement teams. First wave of nonviolent resistance to the people of the land. If you can get them to accept this Bible, we can control them for the next umpteen years. Right. So we have to wake up and realize this shit is over with and we not falling for the banana in the tailpipe no more. And look, when you move in righteousness, you become awakened by earth and prime creator. I don't give a damn what you look like. If both earth and prime creator agree you righteous, can't nobody run you out of here. I don't care if you uh, blue, black with nappy ass hair or if you don't got no color in your pale ass mayonnaise colored skin 
and your hair is the same color blind to match it, what they call platinum blind. Righteousness is the remedy for the problems of the earth. Anybody vibrating on the frequency of righteousness, if the earth and prime creator feel like you belong here, you will be here, period. And it, and it ain't my call. Okay, I got one more question in me. You know, when me and Chief White and I started this video, um, we talked about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is nothing but an electronic um, link between points or what they call bits of information. AI can never become truly sentient because it'll never advance beyond a four bit quantum encryption that's it all it is is it's like a whole bunch of encyclopedias in a database you can program it to have the appearance of emotion and all of that shit but it's not sentient it can't be sentient for one it's got to be made of organic matter to begin with and it's made of crystalline um, um, and crystals and metals that's operational functional the they not in the form that facilitates the organic development of its own accord the mechanical nature of it is a computer uh, a computer uh, motherboard your AI has to come through a device with a computer motherboard. That'll pre prevent it in and of itself from ever becoming sentient on its own. But it can mimic sentient beings because it's predicated up on the human mind. Therefore, the function of it over time can give more of an appearance of functioning like a human, but it won't be able to because the human will be able to always is when a human born whatever artificial intelligence is here the human has to be born more intelligent than the artificial intelligence in order to maintain nature so um that's it for me fam i i, I did the best i could with the time i had today um chief warhorse gave me a, a day pass I don't know when I'm going to be back on. I'm not looking forward to it to no time soon. Um, share the video. Pass the information forward. Hopefully I answered a lot of questions today because I was getting it in while I was getting it in. All right. Peace to the, uh, to the guy.